Aloha, and welcome to the second episode of the HBCU Experience. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. Historical Black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs, are institutions of higher education that were established before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The primary purpose was serving the African American community. Today, HBCUs are at the forefront because of our Vice President, Kamala Harris, who is a graduate of Howard University and HBCU. Today, we will ask the question, why did you attend an HBCU? My guests today have all attended graduated HBCUs, and they are Dr. Paula Major, Otto Taylor, and Stephen Woofter. Let's welcome them all to the show. Aloha, guys. How are you doing? All right. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for being here. I know Steve and Otto, you guys are, of course, out of Hawaii. So you guys are up like way past <laughs> your bedtime right now. So I thank all of you for being here. So I want each one of you, starting with Steve, I want each one of you to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am, I do military and I've also taught for 25 years. So, and I've been in the military for almost 30 years. Wow. And I, I went to- Go ahead, Steve. Oh no, I was just gonna say, and I was there at Hampton with Gwen. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, 30 something years ago. <laughs> Otto, tell us about yourself. Uh, how are you guys doing? My name is Otto Taylor. I'm a junior dual degree engineering major with a concentration in applied physics. And then I attend the Morehouse College. Um, I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii. And Dr. Paula Major, tell us about yourself. Hello, hi everyone. I am Paula Major. Um, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, West Side. Um, I'm a mother, I'm a wife. Um, I was a first grade teacher in Detroit for almost 10 years. Um, and then I went ahead and pursued more education. And now I'm a professor in education, elementary education. Um, I have two little ones, um, a wonderful husband, and I am here in Oahu. Well, welcome all of you. I thank you for being here um, for this show. So of course, you know, we're gonna get this party started, like I wanna say. And I want, I want you, again, Steve, I'm going to start with you. Why did you choose to attend an HBCU? You know I started with you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it, it was so easy. I, I really wasn't thinking in terms, uh, remember, I was young, okay? Probably wasn't the brightest guy, wasn't very mature. But I actually am from a town, a very small town that had an HBCU, St. Paul's College, Lawrenceville, Virginia. And... Um, went to a small high school there. So I, I don't, I don't even know if I really quite understood like, oh, there's all these differences because I grew up with that, that college right there, but it was homecoming St. Paul's college and Hampton university band marched down the street. And I saw that band coming down. I said, wow, that band is awesome. And that's when I started looking up Hampton, found out about the academics and found out about the, at the time I wanted to be an officer in the army that that didn't fulfill it, but, but um, they had a great ROTC program and a great school and an awesome band. So really the band. <laughs> the band, huh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's an honest answer. Well, yes, I can vouch for that. The band was was awesome. I can definitely vouch for that. Otto, why did you attend or why are you attending an HBCU? Um, well, for me, it was a little different. Um, I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Well, actually Rockford, but I grew up in Chicago and I transitioned to Hawaii around middle school. So I completed middle school and high school out there. Um, around my time during middle school and high school, me and my brother were one of the only few, you know, black people in my high school. So um, I was around people that didn't look like me. And I also feel like that, you know, helped me build my character. But um, being around people that look like me with similar ambitions was something I wanted to prioritize when choosing, you know, what college I attended. Um, that's why I went to HBCU. Nice. That sounds like my story, Otto. <laughs> Paolo, why did you attend Howard University? Well... Honestly, ultimately, it was the 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 yard scene. Um, but initially, I was not going to go to Howard. I wanted to be in D.C. because I love D.C. 
and um, I wanted to go to Georgetown and I had Howard as my backup. And so um, I actually, you know, you go through these rigorous stages to get into Georgetown. Um, and so I basically made it up to the interview and then it was okay. Well, academically, you know, we're not necessarily sure you need to go somewhere and then come after your first semester. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to go to Howard, went to Howard for my first semester. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll just transfer to Georgetown It's right down the street. Um, not knowing that I was not ever going to do that at all. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I came outside of Douglas hall and looked at the yard and it was packed. It was hot. It was sunny. It was, music in different corners and you can tell the athletes were here and the fine arts people were here the band people were over there you had people playing soccer like all these different groups were out there and i stood on the steps and i was in amazement i'll never forget the feeling and i was like wow look at all of these brown people just <laughs> vibing and no one's in class right <laughs> and i was just like I'm not going to Georgetown. I'm going to stay right here. And so that's what I did. But that's a true story. Now, I had gone to Howard's um, uh, homecoming. So I always knew like, okay, it's, it's a good school. But I also went to Georgetown's homecoming. And so they partied too. And I liked the parties. I had a friend at Georgetown. And then I had a classmate going to Georgetown. So, you know, my reasons to go that way was for those two reasons. I had a friend there, I had a friend about to go, and um, they seemed to have really good parties. <laughs> those were my reasons of wanting to go to Georgetown. But Honestly. ultimately, it was the yard and literally seeing just all of these people. Well, let me ask all three of you um, this question, because I know for me, um, when I first went to Hampton just, just to visit it, um, and I was with my mother. And, you know, like you, Otto, I grew up going to predominantly white schools. And, you know, I said, you know, got to Hampton's campus and was like, Mom, this is where I want to go. But let me ask all three of you this question. It, it, it seems like a sense of family when you step on the yard, like you say, that's the term we use. What do you say? What do you guys think? That sense of family bonding at an HBCU. It was definitely a lot of like-mindedness, I noticed, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, you had these different chapters, right? You had the Detroit chapter and the Chicago chapter, but you also had like the lacrosse group and then the band group. And then, um, you know, you had all these different um, collaborative groups. And so in a sense, it was definitely family, but I had never been around so many different like-minded people with like the same interests. Nice. Yeah. Now, um, I want each of you to describe a life lesson you learned from a professor or an incident or situation that occurred where you occurred while you were attending your school. Otto, you can go first. <laughs> uh, for me, a lesson I learned was, um, you know, just to handle your business. I've seen a lot of people in my class come to college, um, ready to have a good time, take out, you know, $50,000 to go to school and then, you know, not handle their business and ending up having to leave. You know, college isn't, a, you know, cheap at all. Um, so for me, it was always, you know, what is my why? When I get discouraged, what do I go back to, to keep me going, even if I don't feel like going to class or doing my work? Um, for me, it's my crazy mom, but, you know, for other people, it might be something different. So I would say um, a lesson I learned and I've seen people really get, you know, messed up by is not coming in and taking it serious and handling their business um, once they get there. What about you, Steve? Same question. Oh, uh, sorry. I got caught up in auto. auto <laughs> man, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of job offers. I'm going to tell you that. And, and he hit it spot on because I was one of those people. I, I wasn't that mature and didn't focus as well. But yeah, Otto, you you are gonna have employee employers lined up to get you. Thank um, you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I mean it. it it's uh, I taught high school math, so I've seen a lot of students come through. You're gonna be high value. 
So uh, it was it was the question about the the lesson, right? Uh huh. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, it was it was. How do I narrow it down to just one lesson? I think just bonding with people from all over, from literally all over big cities, small towns, that kind of thing. That was that was uh, new to me. And of course, there again, the band was hype but but there were other i mean i met other people outside the band and you know still keep in contact with a lot of people from way more from hampton than anywhere else honestly so yeah i i think for me it was the bringing together of people from all over that was probably one of one of my biggest lessons paula what about you um I kind of assumed college was going to be easy because high school was easy for me. And so I kind of had this, like I wasn't working as hard as I could have. So I really quickly realized not to just like assume college is not rigorous. It was, I watched people like fall quickly to the wayside my first semester my second semester, those people did not come back, right? And so I was like, oh, let me buckle down. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of in a sense, like what Otto said, you know, um, but he kind of already went there with it, right? He, uh, he, he had it in him. I was like, oh, let me, let me tap into what I got here before I mess around and get put out. <laughs> yeah. That is so it, true. I, I, I just had this big assumption that it was easy, right? And by no means was it easy. I had to work for every grade I got. Every, is... every, uh, every grade, every class, even the, the, the repeats, right? It was hard. Howard is, is hard. Why do you think, Otto, why do you think HBCUs are, are getting positive recognition, recognition as of late? Well, you kind of spoke to it first a little bit earlier. Um, our vice president went to an HBCU. Um, I feel like HBCUs um, are becoming a lot more visible to people. Um, I know for older people that I talked to, um, people didn't really know about HBCUs or um, it was a different time back then. I, I feel like they're getting a lot more recognition for the things they're doing and for the things they're accomplishing. Um, I feel like that's a good thing uh, for me, at least in my story. Like I said, I wanted to attend an HBCU because I wanted to be around people that look like me. Um, I feel like other, you know, Brown students are uh, prioritizing that as well. What about you, Steve? Yeah, it's interesting. I just said that to uh, one of my nephews the other day because I, I picked up my wife a, a Virginia State sticker. And he was like, oh, you went by Virginia State? I was like, yeah, you know, it seems like the HBCUs is really hot right now. And I think Vice President Harris has a lot to do with that because I think people who have gone there have appreciated them for a long, long time, but not everybody knows specifically like, yeah, you know, there's these historically black colleges and universities out there, like no kidding. And they're like, what? So I, th I think a lot of people didn't even realize. And this that's one of the reason why I wanted to do a show like this, especially with uh, Vice President Harris uh, coming into office, because a lot of people don't know about HBCU. You know, no. and, yeah. and especially and another reason is a lot of people don't realize that when you say a historical black college or university, they just think African Americans go. So that's why Steve, you are you are a product. You went there. You went there. And 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 it's a lot of you know non um non-black people that go there now, I should say. A lot. A lot, especially at Hampton now. Um, yeah, for, for the record, they didn't give me any money to go there. Okay, I went there purely because that's where I wanted to go to school. Uh, so plenty, plenty of loans later. But <laughs> <laughs> what would you change about your HBCU experience, if anything, Paula? To appreciate it more than I did. I mean, I did definitely appreciate it, but to appreciate how quickly it went by. Um, it went by super fast those four years. Um, so looking back, I, I was the one that took all the photos and I'm glad that I took all the photos. You know, my friends would always get upset. There you go with that camera, you always taking photos. 
And now they're all appreciative that I took the photos, but I still feel like, oh, but there was so much that I kind of just flew through. So going back, I would really just be in it more, like more in the moment. But you know, you're young, you're in college and I don't know. I don't think anybody's ever mentally like that, but if I could do it again, I would slow it down and be really in it. What about you, Adam? Because you're still you're still there. You're still there. So what about you? Right. I was just about to speak to what she was saying. Um, just really taking advantage of those relationships. Um, really building genuine friendships with other people is something I feel like I prioritized, but should have prioritized even more. You know, with COVID and everything happening, I was only on campus a year and a half. A year and a half. So, I'm a junior, I'm about to be a senior, you know. Hopefully I get, you know, a couple more semesters on campus before I leave, but, you know, it's harder now to, you know, keep up with those relationships. It's harder now to stay in touch with people just because we can't run into each other going to the cafe anymore. We can't run, in, run into each other playing basketball. So, you know, I just wish I would have built more, you know, relationships and networked a little better while I did have that opportunity. Hey, what about you? I wish I'd have been who Otto is now. I wish I'd have been more mature and taken classes in the school and the privilege of being in college more serious. That's that's my one regret is I, I I wasn't a better student. Now I did become a better student, but it took me a while. It took me going in the army and doing some crazy stuff. And then I'm like, wow, you know, college. Then I had that discipline to, like Paula said, work hard. But I wish I'd have had it when I went there. Now, Steve, this this um, question is 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 directed to you, and you know, of course, you were a minority um, at ha at Hampton. How were you treated by your fellow classmates? I I think everywhere you go, you're going to find haters. That if people around the world find a reason to hate someone for any reason, they can look exactly alike, but they'll find a reason. Uh, but at Hampton, I I thought it went well. I, I mean, as far as I. I know there were people who had problems, but really, like, I don't, I didn't associate with them. I associated with the people who were like my family in and outside the band. And just an example of, of welcoming my, my older brother stopped by the school to see me. Now he had no idea where I stayed. I hadn't talked to him in a while. You know, we didn't have cell phones. He pulls up to the gate and he's like, Hey, I'm, my brother goes to this school. Do you know where he is? <laughs> they knew exactly who he was talking about. They were like, oh yeah, he's room 203, Harkness Hall. And I'm like, he's, he pulls up and finds me. But that, but that's how it was. Like people looked out. I think even people working there looked out for everybody. And that's an awesome part of this of, of Hampton and and you know HBCUs is looking out for their students. Each one of you. Tell me something about your school, something historical about your school. Adam? Um, so as you may know, um, the guy standing behind me, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did attend Morehouse College. Um, but a lot of the people don't know about his mentor, um, Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays. Um, he was a very intricate part of the Morehouse mystique. Um, and I see that today on campus. Um, a lot of people have left their mark on Morehouse. Uh, Morehouse has been a, a, around for a very long time. And it's also one of one of the only few places that, you know, produce a lot of African American leaders, um, male African American leaders at scale. One of the only places in the country that do that. Paula, tell us something about Howard. Um, there's so much, but I think the 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 one thing that really comes to mind is. Um, right now, we know we have our vice president in office from Howard, but there's a lot of politicians um, on the Capitol that are working um, for our nation. Um, I think that doesn't necessarily get known out there. Um, so I would say that um, I'm, the, the fine arts has quite a few um, actors and actresses and producers. Um, I could, you know, you got Taraji P. Henson right now. You got um, Sean Puffy Cones. You got um, the producer of, um, um, it's called Cultural Creations. So yeah, it's a lot of 
a lot of well-known people that are coming out of there. Um, I, I do know that right now they're going to put out um, a search for a new president and they're seeking to hopefully fulfill it with a female. Um, so they're always trying to be forward thinkers. So we'll see if that is, will be the latest maybe historical thing coming up. Too many Steve. to name. It's that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Steve? I can't pin it down. <laughs> Steve, what can you tell us? Um, something um, historical about Hampton. Well, Gwen, you remember the Emancipation Oak. Mm -hmm. That that was big, and uh, that was like, oh wow, that happened right here where I'm standing. And also, it was Hampton Institute, and I think it was Hampton normal institute, mm -hmm. if I have that in the right order. And they were educating not only African Americans, but also Native Americans way back in the early day. So that's the two historical parts that I remember. All right. And you mentioned uh, the Emancipation Oak. So if you go to Hampton, um, for everybody that's watching, if you go to Hampton, it's this massive oak tree um, that is there and it's toward the end of the, the campus, but you cannot miss it. But the importance of the Emancipation Oak was it was the site of the first Southern reading of President Lincoln's Emancipation. And that happened in 1863. Because um, um, they, the, they read President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which was an act which accelerated the demand for African-American education. So that is one of the big things now. And, you know, um, when I went back to Hampton for homecoming a few years ago, I was amazed at how it's changed a lot. <laughs> a lot has changed there now. They have a pharmacy school. It's, it's, it's just unreal. You wouldn't even recognize the campus at all. But what were your expectations for attending an HBCU? And did you get what you expected? Otto? So um, my first time on the HBCU campus was going to North Carolina a and um, <laughs> It's actually where I had committed to before I decided to go to Morehouse. Um, but I went to homecoming. So the reason for my uh, pursuit and going to HBCU at first was to have fun. Um, once I went to a Morehouse program over the summer and really sat down and got to be you know, around people, um, other students and also the teachers and like in a classroom environment, um, it really changed my mind or my look on how, um, you know, how much the teachers care about you. They really want to see you succeed. Um, they don't want to fail you, but rather they see, they want to help you and they want to see you do well. Paula, same question. I was just into Otto's response. I know, I'm just what like, <laughs> what's the question? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're just wowing all of us here yes, today, seriously. right now. Yes. No, what were your, <laughs> you want me to repeat the question for you, Paula? Yes, please. What were your expectations for attending your HBCU and did you get what you expected? My expectations were to just, you know, really have fun. Um, I knew I would establish relationships and I did right away. Um, just be around all these beautiful, like-minded people and, and go to school. Um, that was, I got what I expected, but it was so much more than what I expected. Steve, what about you? I, I definitely got more than what I expected. I expected an education, hope to have fun. And I got way more than that because I got people that I haven't seen in 30 some years and talked to and it's like, oh yeah, I just saw you the other day. And I'm very appreciative for that and the lifelong relationships that came out of it. I'm very appreciative of it and a great experience. I, I personally think there's a lot to be said for smaller schools and, um, and Hampton was just a great size for me. How do you apply what you have gained at an HBCU to your daily life with pe people or in general? I don't, I know you're going to give us an answer. Go ahead, man. <laughs> um, well, for me, at least to piggyback off my last answer, 
Um, and just what I've been talking about in the beginning, um, just about building genuine relationships. Um, you know, usually when I meet somebody, I don't really remember what their last name it was or things like that, but Morehouse really taught me to pay attention to detail. So, you know, ask them what their parents' names are. Um, and if you really put effort into getting to know somebody, um, you can find more things you have in common with them. So even in the work world, I might see people that don't look like me or not have similar interests, but that's probably not because I'm not ask, asking enough questions. Um, so I took that from Morehouse and I apply that, you know, in my career and just, you know, in everyday life. Steve? I get mesmerized every time. <laughs> Wait, I'm like, Man, this guy, like, if I was don't like, call me, don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I'm like, wow, that, that's exactly right. That's the perfect answer. Like, what? Okay, say it one more time, Gwen. How do you apply what you have gained at an HBCU to your daily life with people or in general? Well, yeah. I was in an interview once and the and the it, this the principal was like, well, how will you work with black students? And you know, we're we're mostly um this school's like, you know, it's like 85% minority. And I started giggling. I was like, I don't think that'll be a problem, sir. And and somehow it came up like, well, well, where did you go to college? I said something about Hampton. It turned it it turned out he was good friends with my big brother at Hampton, Rick Randall, from the band. Mm -hmm. And man, the, the networking began right there. And uh, the interview was essentially over. He like ends up calling Rick right right in the middle. So I, I think uh, just being able to work with people and and uh, get along and realize, like you said, Otto, we, we, there's always something in common. Get to know people. Get to know people before you start judging. So yeah, I, I take that. I, I love it. And Paul, if you're gonna end it, cause this is gonna be our last question. Paul, if you're gonna end that. What, what, how do you apply what you have gained at an HBCU to your daily life with people or in general? I gained confidence just to have the ability to try, uh, take a risk, maybe fail at it and get up and do it again. Um, I really, really look back and I think it's from my experiences with my professors and, um, you know, trying to get through statistics too. Um, it really just helped me <laughs> like shape my confidence and, and, and really taking that now even into my profession. Like I'm, I, I, I don't, I might be fearful of accomplishing something, but I'm still going to put my best and accomplish it the best I know how. So I really learned how to take risk at Howard. Um, and it was a great confidence booster from my pro professors. In different situations I went through really helped me along the way. So I apply it now, I think, in my work ethic, you see it. Nice. Well, this, I told you this 30 minutes was going to go by quick. And I thank all of you for being here. Otto, especially you have all of us like mesmerized. I usually don't, I'm like mesmerized by you right now. But really quick, can you just tell everybody, um, because you're still in school, I want you to tell everybody what you are going to be doing. Um, so like I said in the beginning, I'm a dual degree engineering major with a concentration in applied physics. Um, engineering is such a broad degree. So engineering to me is just problem solving. I think we're all problem solvers. Um, these past two summers, I've been blessed with the opportunity to work with work for North of Grumman, um, which is a government contracting company up in Baltimore, Maryland. I basically worked on multifunctional space hardware, um, <clears throat> tested, adjusted, calibrated, um, and created, you know, the antennas that go in the F-135 tanks and other, you know, military vessels. So I wouldn't mind doing that. It's been a good experience. I do have an offer for John Hopkins this upcoming summer. So I might take advantage of that to see, you know, what other companies have to offer. You know, I don't I think electrical engineer, you don't think of one specific job. So that's been kind of my journey, figuring out what I want to do with my summers. Well, Otto, you're going to go far. Yes. You are, yeah. you are, you are going to go so far. Yeah. But I thank all of you for being here and representing your schools. To my viewers, until next time, aloha and God bless.